So in this session, we covered the topic on model simplification and standardization. So we take the simple example of this tank level model. So we have seen in a step one, so far we have done a step one, two, and three. Where step one was to define the objective, step two was to gather process knowledge, step three was to develop the model equations. We need to look at step four today, which is model simplification and standardization. Now, why simplification? So in many cases, the developed first principle model may be too complicated to have analytical solution. In other words, the model may not be usable. What I mean by that, say for example, for PID controller design, we need the model equation at the end in the form of a say transfer function which required that we get the, we get a linear ODE. So if you have a nonlinear equation, so the nonlinear equation, if there is nonlinearity, that we may not use that equation for the purpose of controller design. Okay. So, but this is the reason for why we need to do model simplification. Now, what to do? Typically, we will look at one specific aspect of simplification, what is called linearization. And how do we do it? Using Taylor series. More specifically, the truncated Taylor series. Now, what is Taylor series then? So, if you look at the Taylor series, it's nothing but a way to approximate any equation by a polynomial. So, no matter what the main equation may be, you can approximate by a polynomial. For example, you can approximate a sinusoid by polynomial using the Taylor series approximation. Now, how good the approximation? That depends on the nature of the function itself. But in general, if you look at this Taylor series, it expresses fx equals fx naught plus plus up to the term no matter how many terms you take there will be some error there. Now we use the truncated Taylor series to approximate our nonlinear term using a linear term. So what is a truncated Taylor series? Nothing but the term up to the linear term or we have fx equals simply fx naught plus df over dx x naught x minus x naught. So what does it simply tell you if we have a function x instead of fx function will be something like this. If you want to approximate the function around a particular value as linear, so suppose this is your value around which you do the linearization, what it simply tells you that at another point, say x, 
what will be the value of the function okay now if you use only the first term the value would be something like this so fx equals simply fx naught what you are adding here you are adding this term so how does this term come in if you are assuming the function to be linear so with this you need to add this part now what is this part if you look at from this here the slope here is simply the slope delta y over delta x here delta y is function of x so your slope will be delta function of x over delta x so what is delta function of this term now so delta function of x will be slope times delta x this slope is given by nothing but dx at x naught and what is delta x is nothing but x minus x naught so really you are adding this term there which is really nothing but this term here and this is nothing but this term so you are predicting the value the function at x around linearizing it around x naught so that's give you this value you see that it doesn't match with this function value the real value is there so the approximate value is here so you need to add more and more term but if you want to approximate as a linear function so your approximation will be this okay now is this valid now for many process example that's valid simply because process are operated around what is called this nominal nominal operating point now suppose a distillation column the top product is 96 percent and it varies around that maybe sometimes the uh, demand may be for higher or lower so process operate around nominal point meaning the nominal operating conditions and around that if it's operating around that a linear approximation remains valid for many cases and also we don't need many cases we don't need a very precise approximation a precise estimate a the ballpark estimate sometimes works well as this case okay now let's go back to the tank model so in step three of the tank model i'm not going to detail you end up getting something like f t where f is the flow rate over here now if you look at this equation in terms of taylor series so if we take this well, for our case x is h f x is nothing but f h equals the square root of h so we need to linearize this term here this h t now take a look at this when you're talking about this term and taking the derivative here for linearization it will not be derivative with respect to t it will be derivative with respect to the variable itself which is h for this case okay so do remember that part now suppose we are linearizing around say your x naught suppose we take h naught which is nothing but so suppose the value of the level the level of liquid in the tank at time zero okay that's one notation that we'll be using okay now if you look at this how do you really linearize this term now so if you have fx equal fx naught plus delta f over delta x at x naught x minus x naught so let's look at this so h will be plus so d over d h okay so now from this if you know d dx the square root of x 1 over 2 root x and plug in that and that should be evaluated at h naught so we'll have h naught plus 1 over 2 
with not times okay now go back to the equation what we have here so we get our differential equation now plus Let's put the HT now. C was there. Okay. Equals F T. Okay. So now we have this term. This is becoming being a constant here, this constant here. So this is now in the linear form. Okay. Now for further simplification, what we'll get. If we have this equation at t0, we get dh t over dt. Okay, so at say initially at a steady state, so that will be 0 ch0 will be f at this initial value f0. Okay. Now, if we take this, we'll write it down now. A dt. So C H naught will replace it by F naught and we'll take it on the right side. And we'll have this term plus At this point, we introduce the notation of what is called this deviational form. So processes are often considered in terms of their deviational form, meaning that suppose the temperature at 400, people often talk about that, okay, increase the temperature by 10 degree or decrease it by 10 degree. So with reference to some value, we define the variables in terms of deviational form. So we represent it by H prime, the same way we represent it by F prime T, meaning that H prime is representing what's the change from that initial steady condition, okay? Now, if you write it h prime, now dh prime t and dh t will be the same because the constant term, derivative of the term becomes zero. So, you can further write it as a dh prime t over dt plus F prime t. Okay. We'll write it a little bit different form, what is called the standard form as tau with tau to be and k so this is what we'll call the standard form of the equation so we see our step 4 was simplification and standardization You see that we simplified the nonlinear term in this equation using the truncated Taylor series and then replacing those terms using this deviational form, we come up with a standard equation which is a linear ordinary differential equation. So you see that we'll use this standard form for most cases. So that's all about step four where simplification and standardization is involved. So next we'll talk about this solution part.
where you take this equation to solve it to get the solution for this level.